Okay, we're back with more vintage. Today it's going to be uh, some games with Mono White Initiative. Mono White Initiative is basically the one-two punch between White Plume Adventure, Season Dungeoneer, and then you put it in a package with cheap disruption like Thalia, annoying taxing effect like Chancellor, um, Archon of Emeria to slow down the opponent, um, all the acceleration in the world, mana base with Cavern of Souls, Wasteland, Strip Mine, Ancient Tomb to get things moving. And then in the kind of flex slots, we have Dauntless Dismantler, which is a recent printing. So this card is basically slowing down the opponent, killing a horde of sagas, or something else that's going to come up, like clear some, some one, mana, um, one mana value cards that you didn't really expect, like, what do I know, Solring Needle, whatever. Um, and then I play main deck a couple of Containment Priests with Dredge being on an, uh, an upswing, partly due to my success. At myself on the back but uh yeah i think that's basically like playing 17 sideboard cards i think it's reasonable sometimes you just pitch it to a chrome mox or you can the opponent goes serum powder you know you have to mulligan for it stuff like that it's it's decent um but it's like the last two cards of my deck then i play a couple of lorans of course i like this card it's good against saga good against oath just good in vintage you know having disenchant effects randomly lying around trinity sphere here for the on the play uh nutter butters and the sideboard is pretty straightforward. Files against creatures, um, priest against graveyard, ley line against graveyard. I guess priest is also good against oath. Very important. Null rod against broken, and then a couple of archon of absolution against the mirror mainly, but it's also good against all bizarre strategies because they don't play any mana, like dredge or uh, squee wine and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm excited to show show this deck off in a few matches. So uh, yeah, see you for the matches, guys. Okay, round one, we won the die roll. Funnily enough, I think this player is a dredge player. Let's see if we can do anything about that. So what does this hand have? This hand makes sure the opponent is never casting spells. Bizarre enters tapped thanks to Archon, and then I have some time to find... Yeah, I think this is fine. Then I have some time to find, uh, like, Wasteland or Initiative stuff or whatever. Go ahead and imprint the Chancellor. Archon. Wasteland would be an awesome draw, not gonna lie. Wasteland or Dungeoneer. Wow. So the opponent conceded there. But if it's Dredge, they go Tap Bazaar Pass, and they're still in this game. I'm not sure. Can I, can I commit to sideboarding for Dredge? Probably should. I'll, I'll, I'll try and sideboard for Dredge, but I, the thing is, I'm not sure the opponent was supposed to concede there. But all of my, uh, like, the opponent's previous results are Dredge, so... Yeah, this is just going to be kind of funny. Thalia really isn't that great. Hmm. What if the opponent just goes like some hollow one situation? Do I want the plows? Can I get everything in there? Actually, I can. I can get everything in there and just focus on, okay, you're dredge and how do I beat you? I'm gonna look so silly if that's a normal deck, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm ready for it. No dredge hate. I want to keep seven. I don't think this is the time to like chicken out of the plan. I don't think that makes sense. Once I've decided to sideboard like that, wow. So I have a turn two priest. I think I have to I have to accept that. Hmm. Yeah. My my all my hand can do is go I'll your hollow one play this and hope it sticks. Let's see. Oh ha! that's funny. 
Because a lot of the same cards are good against that deck. Okay, that's simply too far. Oops, all spells conceded to uh, turn one Archon. That makes a lot of sense. Whoopsie. Oops, all spells, baby. So let's see here. Slaughter Pact, interesting. Trap, interesting, good to know about. Act of Negation, not sure what that card is doing there. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 we were super dead. So, well, new plan. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, so these cards are good. 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 But maybe we have to shave. Leyline is good. The good thing is they don't know that we play Leyline. Leyline is not stuck out of mono white, which is a decent advantage to have. So let's see, am I just bringing out the initiative creatures? And then I have all disruption in the world. But the slowest clock ever as well. Hmm. I can see I can see that, like dismantler. Let's see. The dismantler says the artifacts enter tap. Maybe that card is not that good. Maybe Thalian multiples is also kind of bad. What if I go like this? Then I also have a little bit of closing power. I'll try and submit this. Oh, that's too funny. Oops, all spells, baby. Okay, I, I definitely keep this hand, but it's... Uh... No, this is, this is going to be fine. Because double A line means it's... They need to find, like, double Chain of Vapor and go off. I think that's too much. So what I want to do here is, is, is get the Archon into play before I play Null Rod. Because Null Rod shuts down my Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt kills me, etc., etc. So I think that's the game plan. So funnily enough, the opponent's deck can also run the White Chancellor. <laughs> so I go Reveal, put into play, put into play. And then no turn one play, which is kind of funny. The opponent with no white chancellor. I'm super interested how this plays out. Now the opponent needs to beat me with... Let's say Delver stuff. Out of... Um, just the black creatures to, to play as beatdown cards. Or I guess Charbelcher activate on the same turn. White source. That is not a white source. I don't think I can play the Mana Crypt out yet. But I'm also realistic about what that could mean. Um, white source. Wasteland. Hmm, what happens if I go Trinisphere? Then the Crypt starts... Maybe that's okay. Then the crypt starts working. I need to find a white source at some point. Trinisphere basically to lock down future artifacts, future acceleration. But him, him to torque on my opponent here is also fine, you know? I need to find a white source pretty desperately. White source, baby. I wonder what's the lucky. Let's go heads. You won the flip. That's nice. White source. Another wasteland. Now I think I'm actually in the. Do I play an all rod? And I need to find a white land. Let's see how many white lands we're actually running. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't like that number. I'm not going to play the Null Rod, which is also scary, but I, I need Chrome Mox to be, a, to be a good draw for me. 
Mm-hmm. Informer. Okay, so now that the opponent's plan is kind of on here, let's just find the white source and not make this exciting. One the flip. Let's go. Ah, there's the chrome mox. Now I look like a genius. Perfect. Now I look like a genius, baby. Uh, so let's see. Maybe I just go white plume, then null rod. How's, how's the opponent going to win? Hmm. Maybe it's also tough to beat Archon. That's fine. Arkonovich, Wasteland, pass. Yeah, I, I, we, we should have this game. I don't really see my opponent coming back from this. Lost the flip. I'm down to 17. That card is good. Let's go White Plume. Go for a planes. That means I can play a creature on my opponent's turn. Can't play any more spells right now because of Archon. Planes. Lion. Because I get to untap Archon on the opponent's upkeep. <laughs> that, was, that was so funny. The, the game two. That was super funny. It makes sense, right? The opponent insta conceded to Archon, which is game over against that strategy. Containment Priest. It's actually quite an advantage if you switch decks from Dredge to something else. Because the opponent is going to mulligan for it. Like, the research and the history is gonna make things complicated. And then all of a sudden, you, you have an edge. Um, yeah. Okay. When it is preventing four damage. Now I'm gonna play the Null Rod. And I'm gonna pass. Yeah, that, 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 was the, that was the beating. So, key decisions in this game. While I'm a heavy favorite to win with double ley line, and I can play Nullrod at any time, but the thing is, I, I needed my opponent to go, let's say they went Dark Ritual, play Goblin Troubles, or pass the turn, and I needed to play the Nullrod. So I left myself open to die against something like, let's say, Lotus or Lion's Eye Diamond, plus Dark Ritual, plus Belcher. But as a return, I didn't lock myself out of the game, and the turn where I don't play the Null Rod out, because I need to leave four more outs in my deck, actually six more with Pearl and Lotus, seven with Petal even, and then drawing the Chrome Box, that, was, that, that, that felt good, that felt good. This is like a, another form of magic, it's not like, oh, who's, who's ahead on board and what's the life total like? This was just a very, very interesting, unique kind of magic that sometimes you just get when you play vintage, I guess. Okay, that was round one versus Oops All Spell. Let's see if we can uh, do it to some more opponents. Don't go anywhere. Okay, we're back with more vintage. I would, in fact, like to play first. Thanks for asking. Okay. This hand, this hand, is, this hand is awesome, right? I can go turn one Thalia, then, depending on what my opponent's playing, I can curve even further. Yeah, pretty easy keep. Something you wanna you wanna do with this deck is you lead on the mox. Because you play Cavern of Souls, so sometimes the opponent's gonna do like some bad move, like, oh, counter the mox or whatever. Um there can be a case for doing the opposite, like occasionally. Um, but to to mix things up. But I think in general it's gonna be nice to play the mox out first as a habit. So let's see, my opponent's on the mold of five. If my opponent's just some kind of bizarre deck, they're not. They are. Orso will pitch Narc Amoeba. Okay, so let's see what kind of bizarre deck. I guess we're just stretching over there. And I have Containment Priest in hand. Is this real life?
So let's see here. I play Tapland Pass. Yep, let's do that. The opponent's gonna mass Dredge here. Dredge Troll. Dredge Narcamoeba. And then I'm gonna play my main deck Priest. And with that card in play, all the opponent can do is, I believe, is Creeping Chill? I don't think they have an answer for that card. I think they need to natural draw um, Hollow One. Yeah. They need to natural draw Hollow One. They didn't. Now it looked like a champ protecting that card. Uh, so let's see. Can I do both? Yeah, I can even do both. This is ridiculous. So I go Dungeoneer, Search of Planes. I go Mana Crypt, White Plume. It's just unreasonable. Very unreasonable. White Plume. Forge, attack for a bunch, win next turn. Wow. Main deck priest, everybody. Okay, so that's my one surprise for Dredge. My second surprise for Dredge is running Ley Lines, which is not um, standard these days. So let's sideboard like we thought we were supposed to sideboard in the other match. Um, no Dismander, no Thali on the draw. No Lorenz, most likely. Let's see. Are these cards any good? I need to pitch... I need to ditch, rather, one more card. There is an argument that Lotus Petal and Chrome Mox go down in value because the games are oftentimes about mulliganing. And the speed isn't as, as, as important when you're trying to have a ley line in your opening hand. Mm. I'm just trying to see if there's any way to make sure I don't lose to, like, Hollow One. Maybe it's better to have some more Hollow One removal and only one um, Dungeoneer. Maybe Archon is actually not that great on the draw. Maybe we can do like this. Yeah, this should be fine. Okay, so we have a little more Hollow One removal because my deck is so well set up to, to force my opponent to be a Hollow One deck that it makes sense. Okay, so I have a I have double priest in my opener. Yeah, I mean. We, we, we keep this. We can lose to some stuff like double disruption, but I think that's fine. Also, the opponent is not, let's say they win this game, they're not going to learn about the ley line, which is just a random, random upside. Okay, so the opponent ditches one dredger. They don't grief me. Let's see if we can draw land here. That would help a lot. Okay, another priest. Okay, Chrome Mox did not get countered. Maybe I... Okay, so we need to think about how can we lose this game? We can lose this game if the first priest gets forced and the opponent manages to build a big board. Hmm. But I think I like White Plume actually. This is so this is so strange. Am I supposed to pitch a priest? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. Mana Crypt also resolves. So the opponent must be pretty confused here. And to be honest, I think I'm a little bit confused too. 
I'm just trying to think how can I how can I lose this game? I guess getting vigored here is a good way to lose. So we play that. So we pray our opponent's last two cards isn't mind break trap. Yeah, that that'll do it to us. Okay, so the opponent brought in vigor. I'm not sure about that. So th this is again like this is a meta game thing. If the opponent is like, oh, I, I I can't afford to lose the ley line, well, then it's awesome, right? But it's oof. it's tough when maybe all they're gonna do is kill like a mox or something on average. But that's not going to help me whether I think my opponent made a suboptimal sideboard decision. That obviously just won them the game, so. Yeah, the opponent gets a, a trillion creatures. What I'm going to do here is just take my draw step and uh, concede the game. I basically want to give the illusion that I might have um, Tabernacle in my deck. Which I obviously don't. Wow. Brutal. Mind break trap everyone. Okay, so the good thing is my cyborg plan is decent against mind break trap. I'm actually gonna go more Archon here because then that allows me to keep hands with Archon um, plus Wasteland or whatever that's worth. But maybe that's just bad. Is that bad logic? No, I think that's decent. Okay. Ooh, they, I got, really got taught a lesson there. Mind Break Trap and Vigor. That got me good. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh. So I have a Ley Line. I can protect it. But I don't have any play. So basically, in the meantime, I'm losing to... The thing is, I'm not losing to the first Hollow One. Because of Chancellor. I think it's too much. I think it's too much. I'm gonna mulling in that hand. Yeah, this is this is definitely better. Because now I can let's see my opponent powders twice. Nothing exciting over here. I guess the wasteland is kind of exciting to know about. When I'm all against the six, I keep. I get rid of what? A ley line or a mox? I'm gonna get rid of a ley line. It's also tricky because I know about Force of Vigor, like how I play this. Because having a ley line is one thing, that's obviously a huge advantage, but what do I. What do I do? I feel like if I go Chrome. The opponent might respond to the imprint trigger, and that would be decent for me, but let's... No, I don't think that's how you play. So if my opponent has a Vigor, they're going to Vigor now. They didn't. Okay, opponent does not have Vigor. The opponent is looking for Vigors and or Hollow Ones. Hollow one hits the field. Hollow one hits the field. Yeah, th this this is this is brutal. I think double hollow one is going to be too much because now all I can do is play like a two two that handles the yard, but I already handled the yard. So yeah, not much to do here. We uh we got owned by dredge. Uh, that's sometimes how it goes. You see, how does my hand line up against the opponents? And when stuff like this happens, you just, you know, can't do anything. And that's the name of the game. All right, that does it for this round. See you guys for the next one. Okay, round three is here. We're on the draw with no turn one play. Yeah, the, I'm going to mulligan. Is this better? It's tough to go further, I think. 
So what do I have here? I have turn two Archon, turn three initiative. Yeah, I highly doubt this is going to be enough. I get rid of the Trinisphere because turn two Trinisphere is so unlikely to be good. Basic Island, Black Lotus. The One Ring. Okay, so we're most likely up against Jewel. Pearl hits the battlefield. Lauren. I'm going to play a tap land here. Oh yeah, this is probably impossible to win. Right now I'm basically trying to find information about my opponent's deck. Opponent with a full grip, developing Saga. I'm Vault, which means... Oh, okay, so now the opponent just has that combo in play. All I can do is try and break it. So, Manicure was a good draw. So I go Loran. Kill the key. If I get forced, it's over. Okay. Fair enough. So the opponent Force of Will is my Disenchant effect. I Wasteland the Saga, but my opponent has infinite turns, so... Not much to do. Okay. I like Triple Null Rod. The Priests are obviously not very strong. And then I have to cut one more card. Okay. Decent, decent. Mm, maybe I just cut a Dungeoneer, because that card is not disrupting, and drawing two copies could be pretty bad. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so Null Rod against that deck. Just, just imagine, no Lotus for you, no ring activations, no Time Vault combo. That card is a beating. The thing is, it's also going to be good against my deck, since I have 12 Accelerants, but... The plan is that I'm already on the board uh, at, at that point. This hand is turn two something. Yeah, it's just not going to do it because if I go turn two Dismantler, the opponent already played a lot of artifacts out. Well, presumably. And White Plume is just um, a clock. It's not disrupting my opponent. So yeah, we're, we're going to keep this hand. Let's see what we can do with it. So we can go uh, turn one, Thalia, to we'll ditch the cavern. I'm actually thinking about ditching the cavern because the double wasteland could come in handy later. I imprint the Emirius Call for Chrome Box. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is a decent hand. The, the clock is going to be pretty slow. But I'm insulated against um, Ursa Saga. Which is like the most normal way to win through uh, tax effects. So the worst thing that can happen now is opponent goes uh, Ursa Saga, Mox, Mox, something along those lines. That would be bad. Let's see here how much mana the opponent develops. Okay. Workshop into double artifact. So while it's tempting to wasteland here, now it's very tempting to wasteland. <sighs> no, I guess that doesn't change anything. Okay. So what I could do here is I go Null Rod, and then I basically say, yeah, I'm looking to win this game with this Thalia alone. Try that plan. Artifacts no longer work. Attack for two. Now we have a workshop for mana. So now, actually, that deck has Worm Coil Engine in the sideboard that they might want. It's kind of a meta. Oof. Okay. Metamorph for Thalia to have like a blocker. I like it. I didn't think about that, actually. And then I draw Lotus. So now... We're basically in some kind of stall. I'm gonna hang on to my double wasteland here, because... I just need to draw a white land. 
and then I can play Archon and kind of turn the corner. Right now, spells are even double taxed because there's uh, two Thalias on the on the field here. Okay, the, the the opponent didn't like their their chances in that game. I don't think they're dead dead, but having me having the double wasteland, I think they're kind of un, uh, overestimating my ability to draw a, an actual white source under an Elrod, but I could definitely see that I was in the driver's seat there. I don't have anything, like, my opponent doesn't care about the graveyard. The opponent plays very minimal amount of creatures. They don't cheat any fatties into play or whatever. And, yeah, they don't, they have plenty of mana, so taxing their attack is bad, and then Dungeoneer is, like, not really what the game is about. The game is about the disruption. Okay, so I have a Chancellor in my opening hand, but no play turn one, no play turn two. Yeah, that's just a mulligan. It's brutal when you have to mulligan a lot with this deck. Let's see here. Now if I put back, um, if I put Caracas to the bottom, yeah, yeah, we, we do that. So the plan here is to play turn one Archon, turn two Dungeoneer. So we're at the Mercy turn one, and we don't, we can't protect the Archon, so. Yeah, this is going to be very, very tough. Turn one, the one ring twice in the same match is just, that's how you win games. Or matches, rather. That's super tough to beat. Also, just a, like, natural flaw of not playing a Force of Will deck. The Archon, Ancient Tomb was a terrible draw because we already had our four mana. Oh, I, pl I played poorly. I was supposed to, to play this uh, Jet out because I can only play one spell each turn. Well, let's see here. When it goes Monolith, pass the turn. Yeah, they, they can only cast one spell, so... No, no more shenanigans. I'll cast Dungeoneer. Go search a planes. Yeah, this way I could have saved two life. If I uh, played the jet out the turn before. Opponent forces. I'm storing a lot of cards. So the thing about that is... Mm, the, the opponent is not... Able to, like, overpower me. Unless they have, a, like, a saga and stuff to do. So Ursa Saga is, like, the number one enemy right now. It's probably going to be impossible to beat. Okay, so... There's a member on the Archon. Now the opponent can go nuts. The coast is clear. Oof, what a beating. I just got smoked. I didn't really stand a chance. I think the thing about initiative is, on the play, it's good against all decks. On the draw, it's bad against all decks. So this is something to, that's interesting when you're picking a deck, and if you're okay with, let's say you play six round Swiss, but you only win two out of four die rolls, are you okay with it then being next to impossible for you to top eight. That's something you have to ask yourself when you when you sign up with this deck. Paradoxical outcome drawing a million cards. So right now the world is my opponent's oyster. The the normal thing here is to either accumulate like force of will, play the one ring and just chill. Or it's just, you know, finding coveted jewel, drawing the whole deck, setting up infinite um infinite uh, turns with Vault Key. But yeah, that's not needed this time. Worm Curl Engine, that'll, that'll be just fine. It's funny, a card like, that used to be like a, a decent card in modern Tron because of Jund and stuff like that, is like a mainstay in Vintage because it's good against like bizarre, yeah, just creature decks in general. Let's see here. Opponent is looking to put one more Wormcall into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a Trinity for a good measure. Love it. 
<coughs> okay, we got truly smoked here by, by Jewel. We didn't stand a chance those two games. The opponent's even showing us the hand for good measure. All right, let's play one more match before calling it a day with Mono White Initiative. I think it's our time to shine now. Let's see. Okay, I think we get one more shot against... Let me just double check here. Yeah, I think we get one more shot against the Jewel deck, which... I'm not even sure I want to... I want at this point. But let's see if we can do better. Holy crap, that was a beating. So my opening hand has a Chancellor, a turn one Thalia, turn two Archon. I don't think on the draw there's anything else like that's reasonable to hope for. Land. And maybe just play a Mox through the Chancellor and pass? That would be very nice. The Chancellor is broke. The, yeah, the shield from the Chancellor is gone. Mox Opal as well. Okay. Caracas. Caracas. So let's start with Mox here. When I did not have anything. Then I'll go Thalia. The next turn I can Archon, unless my opponent goes Saga, then I have to Wasteland, which is kind of a bad situation. Wow, Academy. That's four mana. So my opponent can now play a three through Thalia. Maybe they miscounted for the one ring there? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just supposed to go Archon. I, I think if I don't go Archon, I'm in, I'm in trouble. I could say I try and get lucky with Wasteland. I could do that, but I think this is going to be good. Let's see. Time Walk. Any land drop? No land drop. Okay, so the Time Walk did nothing. That's just like, you know, getting the draw you were going to get anyway. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to play a 3-drop. But what is he going to Tinker for? The thing is with Tinker is, if you get Coveted Jewel, sure, you draw 3 cards, but then you can't play any more spells thanks to Archon. And then I get to take the Jewel, draw 3 cards, etc. I think this is, uh, this is our game to win. Okay, the opponent tinkers for a one ring to draw a card. Then develops her as a saga. That's kind of annoying. Because so I have to wasteland. Another Archon that was actually decent under these circumstances because I couldn't play my four drop. I kind of had to wasteland my opponent. Well, let's see. We have a decent clock here. We're putting our opponent to four, then the ring is going to put them to two. The opponent has to kill me next turn. Four mana. For monolith, so more setup, sure. Un I don't know. I don't know what, it doesn't make much sense here. The opponent can't. It's just one spell opponent. Hmm. Okay. Back for six. Ring is the ring them down at two. And then how do they beat me? Ooh, Dismantler could be sick. Attack for six. Time walk is gone. Time walk was like the obvious way to win this game. I can break up zeros when I want to with Dismantler. His artifacts are going to enter tap until that. So now it's like some one ring action, I guess. Yeah, like chaining one rings as a way to win this game, sadly. Metamorph. 
Metamorph the One Ring. Very sad. Okay. Okay, so I might lose to some time vault combo here. If the opponent can keep chaining rings while developing some time vault stuff, I'm in trouble. Decent Dungeoneer. <laughs> Excuse me. Just search for planes. Don't do anything. The opponent can make a token, make another token and search. Ooh, the Dismantler got bounced. So now the opponent's artifact enter untapped. Okay, so if the opponent goes for the socket trigger, they go for key and then play handball from the hand. That's game. Oof. That's brutal if I lose that game. I thought I was winning for quite a long time. Because of Archon Shield, Thalia Shield, and then Dismantler. They go for Soul Ring. I'm confused. So I guess they don't have the Time Bolt. Like, they don't have the Time Bolt. Because they could have gone for Key. So this looks like just one more ring, I guess. Okay. So they, they, they couldn't get there. They actually had a shot there, which was scary. So triple Null Rod. Or double priest and a dungeoneer. We had practice in this matchup, so let's see. It's game two is gonna be very tough on the draw, like to win two times on the draw, but I think one once we're on the play, I, I feel like we I feel like we have a match win in us here. Yeah, on, on the draw you need to turn one play, that's just Okay. This is this is awesome. So I go reveal Chancellor to hopefully not die turn one, and then I can Null Rod. This is good. So, wonder what my worst card is. Very likely the Sapphire. Because I can just go Ancient Tomb. Yeah. Okay. So, I have a Chancellor. I have a turn one Null Rod. Okay. Hmm. My opponent did not develop any mocks, so I think my play is to, to kill the Saga. Because if my opponent had moxes in hand, I feel like they would have just started to play them. Because of the Chancellor shield and the one mana left over. That is a good draw, because that's my white land. So now I can go Null Rod. If it resolves, awesome. If it gets forced, at least we cleared the way. And then I can go Archon next turn. So now I kind of hit my opponent with a solid 1-2 punch. Disruptive 1-2 punch. I think my opponent has an Ancient Tomb. Ooh, okay. Now it's 3 mana. Don't do it, opponent. Don't do it. Okay. Yeah. That is unfortunate. Now I'm in big trouble. Now I need to hope my Archon keeps my opponent from, from winning, but... Oh, I misclicked. Okay. I was supposed to play the Archon there. Okay. Well, then it's going to be even tougher, because now the opponent can just do whatever. Uh, I clicked the random three drop there. That's that's just bad. You're not supposed to like check out of games, even though it's looking like super grim. I should have, yeah. That's definitely a, a product of that. Mentally checking out when you're extremely unlikely to win. Let's see how we get finished here. 
Going with all the mana in the world. A big grip. Time bolt. And another ring. So maybe we live to see another day, and this is a blessing in disguise. Wow, yeah, time walk. That's awesome. Time walk, dismember. Okay, okay, okay. Opponent's at 14. Goes to 13 here. But it's like a pipe dream. When I won the flip. I'm just waiting to die to either Jewel or Paradoxical Outcome. Saga is developed. My opponent needs the worst hand in, in the history of magic to, to lose this. Let's say I get the turn back, they don't do anything. I can go like Archon Strip Mine, and then I'm doing pretty well. Hardcast Seagate is a cool one. Four mana. One more ring. I guess we're back where we started, so if the opponent does not have a Force of Will, who knows? Let's go... Hmm, I think I'm actually still supposed to go Forge, because there's the trap that might come in handy. I can go Archon. Don't force me, bro. That resolves. Kill Saga. Was this another case where I should have played my Mox? That's pretty, that's pretty bad. So let's see. Maybe it's fine in this spot, actually. I can play whatever I draw. The opponent keeps winning the flip with the mana crypt, which is terrible, because... Let's just say my opponent had six fewer life right now, and I would be very happy. Okay. Opponent has one more dismember. Brutal. Full grip. Can't lose. I'm just going to concede to the first, like, jewel or, or outcome. Okay, so one more ring. Draw. So worth noting here is my opponent's going to get trapped next turn, down to five. Problem is, Lost Flip puts them to two, One Ring puts them to one. Like, oh, I guess they have protection, so I have to dome myself. Is that how it works? Target is a target player, and the opponent has protection. <laughs> That's funny. I have to go Arena. Play Thalia. Force. Maybe I get trapped here actually for no reason. That wasn't the case. Okay, so I guess yeah, we're we're still just waiting for opponent to kill us, which is not a fun position to be in. Hmm. One to one, three, three flips in a row, and they're at nine, which is definitely part of part of our chance to win this game. Come on, opponent, put us away. Bouncing the dismantler. What do we have? Coveted jewel. Yeah, that'll 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 do it. Okay. As expected, we got destroyed on the draw. Let's see if we can do it to the opponent. We actually had some good plays there, like Null Rod, Archon, Thalia, even showing the Chancellor, but yeah, the opponent did a good job. This is turn one, Dismantler, and nothing playing from the top of our deck. I'm gonna mulligan that. Even though it feels super sad. Okay. So here I can go. 
turn one Thalia. Eep. Maybe get rid of a uh, Dauntless. I play turn one Thalia because that leaves me with Petal still in play. And that allows me to play Archon, but really not the best. When it goes Mox, even one more. Yeah, I feel like the opponent's trying to dismember something that cannot be dismembered, like the, the tax effect on Thalia here. They go for Black Lotus instead. This is going to be tough. This is going to be very, very tough. Especially if they have that dismember. Oh my god. Soul Ring. Ancestral Recall. So developing a bunch of mana and refilling the hand in the face of Thalia. Brutal. I'm going to I'm going to try playing the white plume actually because I think white plume makes it so that my clock is faster and my mana is sustainable and I'm basically hoping that Thalia is making sure my opponent doesn't go nuts which can definitely backfire but this is a way to say okay this coming turn I'm holding my breath but if I get past that turn I'm in way better shape Time Bolt. And the key. Okay. Well, that'll that'll do it. We got a serious beating here. Um especially against against Jewel. That was just such a beating. Um obviously we had pretty, let's say, medium draws, and they had very, very strong draws, but that's just something you have to um, you have to be ready for when when signing up to a vintage tournament. Sometimes you just get like Lotus Ancestral Double Acceleration Vault Keyed, and your decisions didn't matter a ton. Like let's say I go Archon, then the opponent is just gonna say, "Well, sure, develop one of these, then next turn kill me." Um, I think I did a reasonable plan here, trying to speed up the clock um, instead of just killing my own mana and then saying, "All I have is Archon and Athalia, come beat me with two mana." But who knows? I don't I don't I didn't think that much about it, but I think this this makes sense. Like unless your opponent goes absolute nuts, Thalia is very similar to Archon, but obviously here it wasn't enough. And uh yeah, that I think that was a pretty cool showcase of Mono White Initiative. We didn't actually we didn't get to do it to to people like really um which is kind of sad, but we, we got to showcase the the downsides of the deck, like you need a turn one play, you mulligan a bunch, sometimes the opponent has force of will. We didn't play any uh, good creature through Cavern of Souls, like deading our opponent's force of will, just playing uh, White Plume Adventure into Dungeoneer, killing opponents quickly. Like, we didn't have a lot of that, so obviously you're going to get that if you, if you play more games, but yeah, that wasn't meant to be today. Okay, that does it for the showcase of Mono White Initiative in Vintage. Tomorrow I'll be back with one more vintage, uh, with another vintage video. So yeah, I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.